Hello, bonjour and welcome to your new Bonner Private Wines video, a new quarterly tasting video synonymous with very good news. We need more of these in the world, good news that is, meaning you're going to be receiving your first 2024 collection from the club, meaning we're sending you delicious wines from the extreme altitude vineyards of Argentina, which, as you know, we adore and we know you love them too. So it's time for me to introduce you to those bottles, where they come from, what you should expect from them, what they're going to be tasting like, and more, who made them the producers. This is also, I must mention, our 20th collection since we launched our exclusive wine club, our five-year anniversary so it's very very special for us by the way we made an anniversary video with Will Bonner and Diego Samper and myself to celebrate this milestone giving you a bit of an insight uh, into our work and, li and lives really the backstage of the club and you can watch it right here. Today I'm going to tell you the stories of five delicious vinos. We had an issue with shipping the sixth wine on time from Argentina through the French customs and administrations for me to include it in this video but I'll tell you all about it in an upcoming review video very soon. What we have for you here is a very nice fruity Criolla Chica red two uh, modern style Cabernet Franc blends, a grape that you know I personally appreciate a lot. And then of course we have two healthy rich reds from Malbec. The last one I hear is an absolute uh, gem, so you don't want to mess my impressions on that one in particular. But let's go and talk about those wines. We don't need uh, to introduce Agustin Lanus, the maker of this wine here at the club. We've brought you quite a few of his wines over the years, but if you're new here, he's an Argentine winemaker who trained in many countries, including in Bordeaux, France, before settling in the extreme altitude vineyards of Salta a long time ago. Agustin travels all the different valleys in constant search for interesting vineyards and grapes that he can turn into vino. He works with local families to help them crop the vines, yield healthier grapes and help locals make a good living essentially and also <laughs> on the way help us enjoy some rare extreme altitude wines too. So this exploration, exploration series cuvee is made from the very local and rare Criolla Chica grape. I made a complete uh, video uh, about this grape that you can watch here if you want to learn all the intricacies and all the history, but it's essentially an ancient grape introduced to Argentina by the first colonial settlers and that still survives to this day, generally in very old vineyards in remote locations like here in the Calchaqui Valley. It makes for wine that are a little lighter in style, as we'll see, meant for easy enjoyment, let's say, fruity and pleasing tasting, served a little chilled, generally, traditionally, even in Argentina. Let's find out. And indeed, we have a wine with a relatively light color intensity, as we expect from Criolla Chica, being this lighter fruity style, but a vivid red uh, color indeed it has, but uh, some orange hues to it, making it look somewhat like a mature uh, wine as well. So let's see what it tells us on the nose. Oh, wow, nice. Yeah, interesting. This wine smells incredibly, incredibly appealing. Yeah, it smells really sweet and pleasing, like a fruity blonde caramel, almost like a sweet raspberry candy. 
If you can imagine what that would smell like, it has some complex fresh sour cherry aromas as well, touches of anise to it, a little minty and herbal too on the background, so complex but primarily sweet smelling and unbelievably fruity. Certainly, certainly very tempting to smell, so let's dive in. Fascinating. This is a wine that immediately reveals itself to be extremely easy to enjoy. The tannins are very delicate and very smooth. It's got very light and seamless body texture. It just caresses your palate with no aggressivity whatsoever. Just pure lightness and joy. But while the body is aerial, let's say the flavors are concentrated and intense, the fruits and the spices are definitely the highlights. It tastes like a mild cran cranberry juice. It's got this salivating feel, but heaps of mixed spices as well. Sandalwood, a bit of cinnamon and clove and reminiscent somewhat of a mulled wine to the background. So it throws a little delicate bitterness as well to the finish, promising it will also be a salivating wine to pair with delicious food. So it's super easy wine, but with some depth. It has an element of a mature wine to it with all these slightly waxy and woody spices undertones. I love how it's fruity, plenty of pear flavors as well as the fresh berry, but it has the complexity of an aged wine at the same time. So this is going to be perfect for aperitif served slightly chilled uh, and to enjoy with appetizers, with some mild cheese as well, a mild cheese platter, a charcuterie board. You can drink it now, definitely it's meant to, to do that, but you can also cellar it uh, for a couple of years. It's going to be also perfect this summer with all your appetizers and all your outdoors aperitifs that you're gonna do. Perfect, perfect to drink now. Enjoy. This next wine red blend is made by a man called Paco Puga or Paco who works on his family estate and he sources uh, grapes here from various terroirs of the Calciacchi Valley to find the most suitable grape growing conditions always in extreme altitude vineyards. We know Paco here at the club really well. Uh, you had wines from him uh, before. He made the Mugron Malbec uh, that we had last year if you remember with this contemporaneo blend of tintas understand contemporary red blend essentially in Spanish. Paco wanted to pay tribute to his grandfathers who influenced him so much and gave him their passion for viticulture but he wanted a blend of modern grapes that represent part of the future of winemaking in Argentina. So more elegance, more know-how and expertise beyond just a Malbec, hence the name Contemporaneo Contemporary. 60% of Cabernet Franc for the elegance, I'm quoting Paco here, has a put set, 25% Malbec for the power, so there is some Malbec in here, and 15% for Merlot, 15% Merlot for the freshness. That was aged for 12 months in oak bells. And here we are in the bigger reds. That's a red blend with such an intense color. It looks incredibly vibrant. It's dark to the core, very dense, but the vibrancy and depth of the red here is remarkable. Tons of color, uh, concentration, absolutely beautiful, but it looks useful with intense hues of purple to the rim. It looks quite purple, meaning it's young. Let's smell. Mmm, ooh, nice and complex. Yes, this contemporary blend smells, hmm, at first surprisingly meaty. It smells somewhat like beef stock, which make you anticipate that it's going to be incredibly salivating to taste. But past this first impression, 
Yes, all the fruits are revealed and they're profound this time. Really rich and dark cherries, gorgeous sun-ripe strawberries, sweet berry fruits, so much riper here, but not cooked or jammy, and that's the important point. Just pure fruit freshness. I love how the nose has the signature traits of Cabernet Franc as well. Cabernet in general, green pepper and white ground pepper, just subtly Suddenly, this reminds you that we have a Cabernet Franc here. It is a bit introvert and restrained at first, so it's going to take a little while to open up. Uh, I can just tell by smelling it. So you'll want to open this one, like open the bottle two hours before serving, or put it in a decanter one hour ahead of tasting, just so it blooms and you get more of that fruit. Uh, characteristics. I'll leave it open up in my glass for like 20 minutes because I feel I can taste it very well here, 20 minutes, and I'll get back to you in 20 minutes to see what it tells us to the palate. Okay, it's been 20 minutes, I'll let this wine breeze uh, in my glass, so let's get to tasting. Yum, it was definitely worth it waiting a bit. It's so much expressive now. I absolutely adore the palette of this wine. It's such an archetypal, good and ripe Cabernet Franc as it immediately bursts with very potent floral aromas of violet flowers. If you've ever tasted violet petals or smelled a violet flower, that's exactly what they taste like. And what this wine throws at you is predominantly those violet flowers at first. A really rare sensation at this level of expression. The ripe dark cherry flavors are there as well, probably from the 15% Merlot. The Malbec is showcased through the, the meatiness of the wine I was detecting on the nose. So you can definitely feel all those different blend components. This is a wine all about the freshness and the crispness of the fruit characters. What's impressive is how a fresh, all the fruits, how, how, how vibrant, just like eating a bowl of fresh mixed berries, yet you get a feel of how ripe those berries are, the acidity and vibrance together with the richness, the ripeness from the fruit, how extreme altitude makes magic and makes combinations of flavors that seem impossible. You normally wouldn't have the really fresh berries and the really ripe berries at the same time. Well, they're both in there. This is a dry wine, meaty and juicy, that cries to be paired with rich food. So get ready for your best steaks, the rich grilled meats and stinky cheeses too. This vibrancy and lightness of Cabernet Franc is a superb expression that, we'd, that will easily age for five to seven years. If you want to sell her for a year or two, I think it'll help it round up the edges a little bit for enjoyment on its own, uh, especially. But if you want to pair it with rich foods to cut through the fat with the freshness and grip, it's already ready now to drink. Enjoy. And here is another wine by our friend Francisco Morelli at Bordega Sierra Lima Alpha. And another Cabernet Franc based wine, very modern expression of Argentina today. A Cap Franc grown around the town of Cafajate, so not quite as remote in the mountains as some of the other wines, but still incredibly high in altitude nonetheless. And this include a small proportion of Malbec, really small this time, aged in oak barrel for more complexity. Uh, so let's see how it compares to our previous Cabernet Franc. We definitely have more Cabernet Franc. This is definitely dominant. A large dominance of Cabernet Franc here, just a touch of Malbec for a bit more body, maybe, perhaps. Well, and this is certainly a Cabernet Franc with a remarkably intense color. If you know Cabernet Franc, especially from the Loire Valley in France, where it originates from, you might be used to 
a dim, dimmer uh, appearance, uh, they're lighter in style. This is more like the serious cut franc, like they grow in Bordeaux for example, and even more intense looking. A super vibrant purplish, again red color uh, that you can see on the rim, looking really, really youthful. Let's sniff. Ooh, wow, 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 wow. Oh, perfect. This is such a pure expression of what I would consider a perfect Cabernet Franc, at least on the aromas. It smells just like pure fruits. It has a fresh, ripe um, blackcurrant, zingy, but sweet blackberry at the same time, ahead of French, French, fresh uh, strawberry, just pure berry fruits uh, that are both really ripe under the sun, but still smelling fresh and crisp. There's a bit of a deep venous element too. It smells really like wine, some dark spices like clove. It smells quite dark actually, really dark spices, a touch of red bell pepper as well, signature Cabernet aroma, and some green pepper lifting things up a little bit. So just an aromatic profile that is balanced and super complex. That's why I'm saying almost perfect, I would say. Let's taste. Mm. 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 So nice. This wine made me melt a little bit because the first impression is a world of smoothness and that's such a pleasant surprise. Sometimes with the greener Cabernet Francs, the French ones for example, they can feel a little bit tart, but here the natural grip of Cabernet Franc has been skillfully smoothened up with ripe grapes to start with, you can tell, but also with talented winemaking on top, I would say. It's very soft and velvety. Then the dense tannin structure reveals itself, backed up by a nice crisp acidity uh, that drives the tasting all along to the finish, always a bit of a salivating bitterness at the end. Similarly, the flavor starts the flavors start all about the fruit, then slowly evolve towards more savory notes, the clove and the pepper spices. There's this bitter, dark chocolate that is reminiscent all in the background. I love how a juicy uh, cherry juice feel uh, this wine has on the mid palate. It really tastes like a cherry juice. You feel you're drinking a delicious cherry juice essentially, but with this vinous complexity of a wine, the spices, the delicate oak. So it's fruity and punchy, but very, very elegant at the same time. And that's what, why we love, why I love Cabernet Franc. And I also find here the elegance of delicate floral character, extremely satisfying. This is to me the type of red for sophisticated cuisines, for the nice steaks and fine meat cuts or a creamy chicken dish, for example, it's powerful but sophisticated and elegant. I can see a refined pasta dish here too, a cacio e pepe or aglio e olio pasta dish, more of the white sauce pasta, if you see what I mean, mushroomy, mushroomy dishes as well would be perfect. Anyway, you can enjoy its pure fruity freshness now in 2024, but it'll age for a decade, I'm sure. Our next wine comes from a unique vineyard site, a small plot at about 9,000 feet of elevation, located in one of the newest and most up-and-coming wine regions of Argentina, just essentially the next province from Salta, uh, that where we usually source our wines from, so just a little bit north uh, from Salta. It's a small province called Hui Hui, uh, also in the Andes and extreme altitudes. Here lies a small 10-acre property uh, nestled uh, in a high-altitude mountain canyon with really poor rocky soils in a valley called Wichaira. I know it's not easy to say Wichaira. Uh, the estate is named after this valley, Wichaira, so Wichaira Vineyards is the name of the winery. It's a small vineyard uh, run by a, the Nieva 
family or nearby family I should say and is planted with mainly Malbec at about 80% with the remaining 20% being some Syrah and Cabernet Franc. What's interesting here is that rather than making really tiny batches with that Syrah and Cabernet Franc which would end up being really really small batches well they harvest them all together with the Malbec and co-ferment them all together to get the expression of the terroir, the soil, the valley, more than of the individual grapes themselves. Then they mature this very wine for about 12 months in large used oak barrels to smoothen up the wine, get it more complexity, but without infusing too much oak flavors. We have here a wine with a delightful, super intense red color, really vivid a red color, a wine that is neither evolved or orange, nor is it looking youthful or purple, bang on, dramatic, dark red color, bang on in the middle, really red. But let's smell. Ah, oh, wow, yes indeed, it's also very vivid and bright to the nose. Mm. Yes, it feels very precise and clean, sharp, a red fruit characters, smelling very much like a crisp yet gorgeous cherry juice with a bit of touches of cooked strawberry, a little caramel, a little dark cocoa, some minerality comes through as well. It feels extremely, extremely juicy, quite a bit of peppery spices as well. Yeah, there's a lot going on, but overall, it smells really fruity and appetizing and juicy. Let's taste. Wow, yum! I absolutely adore this wine. I don't know why, but Extreme Altitude Marbeck does that to me. I fall in love with every glass that I taste. It's a bit odd, but yeah, they're so good. I love I love first how the first striking sensation that you experience straight away as the wine hits your palate is that it features incredible aromas of dark chocolate, one of those super fine Grand Cru chocolate but combined with some bright red berries as well. So it tastes like a cherry chocolate with a very from very fine chocolatier or chocolate maker, not one that you find in a supermarket. Super fine, it has this darkness, this toastiness uh, to it that I love, but the berry fruits uh, keep it really lively as well. So the tannins underline this delicious character as well, the smooth and pleasing, and the underlying acidity preserves the freshness as well. So there's definitely the sensation that you have a wine in the center stage, all the fruit, the berries, the juicy, the acidity, the fruitiness, it's meaty from the Malbec, but also intensely spicy and around this vinous space is a toasty intensity from a very well thought out barrel maturation. The oak is there, the darkness, the toastiness, but smooth and deepening. It adds these toasty flavors of caramel and cacao without overpowering the fruit. Now the finish is really smooth as well, very intense, mellowed, spicy, bursting with flavors, intense, and more importantly, the overall balance is nothing short of quite spectacular. It's a very well executed wine, as we love them from Extreme Altitude Vineyard. It's pretty much ready to drink as is. You open the bottle half an hour prior to serving, serving and you're done. You can drink it now. Uh, it's perfect. It's uh, five years old already, uh, so it's matured uh, for you. Uh, it's still quite useful after those five years, meaning that it will still age for five and perhaps ten more years if you want, but it's perfect now and the perfect companion for really comforting foods, rich foods, anything you can want to throw at it, as long as it's tasty, it's going to be perfect.
and on to our next and final wine I'm so excited about. Uh, again, we've told you the story of the Bodegas Taquil uh, several times here and the passion of Raul Davalos that I mentioned before, the winemaker who was virtually born on his family's estate just next to Bill Bonner's ranch, in fact, uh, lost, lost in the remote mountains of Salta. Uh, his estate uh, is run by, has been run by his family for five generations since essentially the first settlers arrived in the area, I believe. Uh, Raoul is a true connoisseur though of this rare terroir. He also trained uh, uh, at winemaking in Europe and has traveled the world. So he's not just a traditional know-how local, he also has the knowledge of modern savoir-faire from around the world and combines all of this so skillfully. Uh, this is one of his flagship uh, wines called the 33 uh, de Davalos, the 33 from Davalos, uh, which is made primarily from Malbec with small proportions of other grapes, a bit of Cabernet Sauvignon, Tanat and Bonarda from old single vineyard called Silverio uh, at 8200 feet of altitude. So this wine was matured in oak, just, no it wasn't matured in oak, that's the whole point. Uh, just fermented fruit it is, no fining, no filtration prior to bottling. It's just the pure expression of that Silverio uh, vineyard, as I'm told. Good Lord gracious, when you look at this wine, the color intensity is unbelievable. I'm not sure you'll be able to tell, I'll film it and if you can tell in the B-roll, but imagine the darkest, most intense looking wine you've ever witnessed. Well, this is more <laughs> probably darker than, than that. It even colors the whole sides uh, of the glass as you swirled. What a deep, vibrant red color it has and looking Really, really useful here, such a gorgeous shade, so dark. Let's see if the smell is as impressive. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, wow. And yes, it's, it is actually just as impressive to smell. Men, straight away, you have a little sniff and you have to pause in sight. You're like, Oof, this is unbelievable in awe it, it leaves me it smells so good and profound at, at first you just smells like an incredible dark chocolate it's toasted it has tones of incredibly complex dark roasted coffee beans as well but it's also uh, sweet it's got vanilla and toasted almonds and hazelnut so it smells uh, bitter and sweet at the same time, savory sweet, the dark chocolate and the fruit, some sort of uber complex oak smell it got, almost like a, an old port, fortified port wine, but smoother and finer, it's just letting a little bit of fruit come through uh, the nose, slightly jammy blackberry, uh, it smells so, so good, I could sniff this wine for forever <laughs> but let's taste mm. oh my god this is so good and now I actually now that I taste it I think I was a bit confused from the nose now I see and understand what's going on here it actually tastes somewhat like a blonde raisin juice, like you pressed some sultanas and made wine out of it. That's what it gives, why it gives this incredibly rare appeal in flavors and aromas, because it reminds you of gorgeous fruity sweetness. But what's remarkable here is that despite it tasting so rich and raisiny, it actually still tastes fresh and vibrant. It's not just an overly cooked wine like you so sometimes get out of California where the winemakers get the grapes so ripe that all the grapes are really cooked and you end up with flabby wines. No, here it tastes like 
ra raising juice somewhat on the background, but it still has plenty of freshness, plenty of acidity, dense and greepy tannins. It has fresh red berry flavors, some cooked apple, uh, yes, admittedly. It has some orange liqueur to it as well. It has some <coughs> lemon zest that's a lot fresher. Tons of spices, a little like an old vintage port, uh, indeed, and all of it is coated with this incredibly, what appears like well integrated oak, the coffee, the chocolate, the vanilla, the toasted wood, really, you can sort of taste. That's a secret when you have a really well structured wine, it integrates the oak to perfection because it's so structured. But this wine wasn't aged in oak and that's what's mind-blowing. It came from the rich sun-ripe grapes, all these dark chocolate goodness and the slow, slightly smoky flavors came from the concentration in the grapes by itself. And that's absolutely remarkable proving that this terroir is really, really unique. It's absolutely gorgeous, a really rare tasting experience this is. I even myself haven't had many of such wine tasting experiences up to this point. Superb, because it's so rich, but so fresh at the same time. So you can enjoy it now, it's delicious already, but this can probably age indefinitely as well. It's splendid on its own. In fact, you have to taste it on its own uh, so you can really appreciate it, but then you can pair it with something tasty. Uh, it'll have to be really tasty food, but something fine as well, like an expensive cut of meat that's quite rich or an expensive cheese. Uh, what a revelation this is. Well done, Raoul, uh, for making such a wine, such a memorable experience of a wine. And here you have it, your new Argentine wine collection from the club, exclusive from the Andes Mountains and our passionate winemakers who I think have continued doing a fantastic job delivering extraordinary wines. Those winemakers are fascinating. They're so good year after year. Every single one of these wines is so genuine to the extreme altitude terroir. There's hardly any oak in them. So or if there is, it's so subtle and well integrated. They've let the grapes speak for themselves. They've let the soil, the mountains speak for themselves. And we have here such different interpretations as well, like musicians playing the same sheet on different instruments would render a completely different composition of different feel. Here, I feel winemakers have been playing with varied grapes, with the ancient Criogia, uh, with an elegant French grape that is Cabernet Franc, and with their beloved Malbec, of course. And they ended up singing from a classical ballad to a melodious rock song, very different interpretations and different feels overall. So you, in the end, get the fun part, uh, sitting back, relax and enjoy the music in different genres that you can apply to all types of different occasions, companies or food pairings, relaxed, serious opportunities, showy occasions. If you want to show off those Marbecs, how good they are from the sea or from the earth, you can pair those wines with different foods as well. These five wines will deliver beautiful diversity and versatility with food pairings, as I hope I've demonstrated here as well. Thank you again for your ongoing support over all those five years from the club. I hope and I know that you're going to be delighted enjoying those wines. Thank you dearly from everyone at the club for your passion that we share. And I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Take care. Cheers. <laughs>